most people, moving out of their parents' house is the first and honestly the most effective way to sign themselves into growing up. Don't feel like cleaning your room? You'd be living in a dumpster in no time. Don't feel like getting up in the morning? Good luck paying for rent. In this rather shaky stage of life, teenagers through young adults all need love, support, and respect to successfully take a step ahead. Kelly Maitland has been there and done that. She was once a young adult who dreamt of chasing after the greater things in life. The Maitlands lived a simple life on a farm in East Franklin in Vermont. Her daughter, Brianna Maitland, knew she was capable of hustling hard, so she moved out of the family house at a young age. This is okay as her mom is all about supporting her daughter's aspirations. Because her daughter became independent at such a young age, she knew Brianna could use some unwinding once in a while. That's why on March 19 of 2003, she planned to take her to lunch and perhaps look at some shops too. Besides, Brianna just finished the exams to get her GED and this just calls for a celebration. But that day, as she was talking about her plans on going to college, she suddenly gazed through the window and her once happy mood turned into grim and discomfort. It's like something just snapped and took the life out of her. Still confused when they went back to the car, Kelly proceeded to drive Brianna back to her apartment. Little did Kelly Maitland know that fearful face would forever be ingrained in her mind as that was the last time she would ever see Brianna. Hey, my name is Detective Maple. If you like true crime stories and unsolved mysteries, hit that subscribe button because I'm here to bring tons your way. So drape your blanket over your head and let's get spooking. Brianna Alexandria Maitland was born on the 8th of October in 1986 in Vermont to her parents Kelly and George Maitland. She and her older brother were raised on their parents' humble farm in East Franklin, Vermont. Brianna's friends and family describe her to be full of life, spontaneous, intelligent, and independent. However, behind her friendly disposition, she was the last person you wanted to mess with. Her extensive training in jiu-jitsu is all the warning you need. It was no surprise that on her 17th birthday, she broke the news to her parents. She is moving out. Probably trying to hold back their tears because their once little girl has grown up into a self-reliant woman, they supported Brianna's decision. 24 kilometers away, Brianna Maitland transferred to her friend's high school. Whether she expected it to be easier or just missed on securing a stable living arrangement, she constantly moved in and out of friends' homes. Unfortunately, because of this, she was forced to drop out of high school. Shortly after, in February of 2004, she moved in with Jillian Stout and continued with her education by enrolling in a GED program. On March 19, when Brianna had lunch with her mom in a local mall, she was described to be in high spirits as anyone who just finished their exam for a GED would be. Maitland was trying to get her life together and take it beyond. While they were in a checkout line in a store, Brianna was distracted by something or someone when she looked outside the window. Brianna told her mother that she would return shortly. After checking the items out, her mom went back to the parking lot where she met an agitated and shaken Brianna. For some reason, Kelly did not ask why. Maybe she was worried that asking would make her feel worse. Besides, Brianna was not filling her in with details either. When she asked to be dropped off at their apartment so she could prepare for her shift at Black Lantern Inn, she obliged. Only Brianna would know what exactly happened at the apartment, but we know for sure that she left a note to her friend that she is supposed to return after work that evening. Was this her nonchalant way of signaling that in case she does not return, her friend should be worried? I guess we'll never know. Maitland drove to Black Lantern Inn in a 1985 Oldsmobile sedan that was registered to her mom. Although her co-workers invited her for dinner after she clocked out at approximately 11.20, Brianna declined, stating that she needed to go home and rest for her next job at St. Albans the next morning. They did not see anyone with her when she left. 
On the afternoon of March 19th, the Vermont State Police was dispatched to a barn locally known as a Dutch burn house, a mile away from the Black Lantern Inn, after reports of an unusual case of what they presumed to be a drunk driving accident. While there were no witnesses to the actual accident nor the abduction, several passers-by took an interest in the weirdly placed car. In fact, the scene was intriguing enough that several photos were taken that would later be useful for evidence. A piece of plywood was on the trunk of the car, and the rear end breached the side of the barn. Perhaps it's the abandoned barn, the snow, or the dark mountains. According to anyone who would look at the photos, there is something eerie in the scene. Something just does not fit in, purposefully confusing onlookers. What the police found inside the car would storm them with more questions than answers. Inside the car were some loose change, a water bottle, and an unsmoked cigarette. In the front area, they found uncashed paychecks. The keys were not in the ignition. Around the scene, a woman's fleece jacket and a broken necklace were found, both of which did not belong to Maitland. The police thought it was probably a drunk person who crashed into a random barn and walked home thinking their car would be chilling where it was left. The Vermont police did not jump to the worst possible conclusions and tow the car to a local garage. Brianna's case was a perfect storm of a missing case according to a retired VSP, Lieutenant Brian Miller. For one, she was not living at home with her family, which is totally fine except no one could have had the alarm bells when she did not come home. Her roommate, who was supposed to look after her, was out of town. Her car was also registered under her mom's name, not hers, so the police did not initially have a background about the missing person. Her work shift would not be in the next several days, so no one was expecting her to show up. The three critical days since her disappearance were lost, and only Brianna or the persons who took her would know what truly happened. To her family, Brianna had a whole life ahead of her. She was working hard, getting her diploma, and planning about college. It was out of context for her to suddenly run away. But the police for a long time believed otherwise. They said Brianna was probably unhappy with her life and where it was going, urging her to start again. Aside from the strange way the car was abandoned, she has uncashed paychecks inside the vehicle. Sure, completely turning her life around includes leaving a lot of things that remind her of her past, but without a cent in her wallet, she's smart enough to know that she's not gonna get anywhere. As the police proceeded with the investigation, it came to their knowledge that three weeks before she disappeared, Brianna got into a fight and was attacked by another team named Kaylee Lacrosse at a party over a guy. Refusing to fight back despite her jiu-jitsu training, Maitland was allegedly hit on the face by Lacrosse over and over resulting in a broken nose and concussion. The women were thought to have moved on from the altercation, swept it under the rug, and acted like it was nothing. But later, with Kelly Maitland's urging, charges were filed against Lacrosse. Some theorized that reheating the issue again and knowing that the charges could get her imprisoned could have angered Lacrosse and gave her motive to abduct or do more horrible things to Maitland. Three weeks after Brianna's disappearance, though, Lacrosse has been cleared of any involvement. In late 2004, an anonymous tip came in implicating two men named Ramon Ryans and Nathaniel Charles Jackson in the disappearance and alleged murder of the Vermont teen. According to the woman's affidavit, the men were crack dealers who got into an altercation with Maitland. Allegedly, the men were supposed to meet her in the barn to sell drugs. But after getting the money, they refused to give the product and instead killed her and disposed of her body on a pig farm. Ryans was later put on trial for drug-related charges where he would make a deal with the prosecution and that he would tell the truth about Brianna. The police were very tight-lipped about what Ryan had stated about the case. Regardless, he would only be given a 45-day prison sentence. Some had speculated that Maitland was in debt to Ryans and Jackson because of her crack addiction, and she's trying to pay it off and sustain her habit by working two jobs. It was the man she saw in the local mall on the 19th of March, 
probably threatening her life if she was not able to pay them. This theory raises eyebrows, especially for those who know to what extent drug addiction could affect one's mentality. If Brianna was really succumbing to her addiction, people think there's no way she would be able to hold down a job, let alone two jobs. There is also a theory that Brianna Maitland was lured into illegal sex work and is being held hostage by human traffickers. How someone trained in jiu-jitsu was abducted and left no evidence of foul play suggested to some that two or more had probably kidnapped her or a deadly weapon was used to threaten her. In 2006, she was allegedly spotted in a casino in Atlanta, New Jersey with a man potentially her abductor, but neither of the two was identified. Could this woman in the picture be the missing Brianna Maitland? No further evidence was found to support any of these theories and Brianna remains unfound. In 2022, the police announced that they found DNA evidence at the crime scene, although they have not mentioned to whom or if they even know to whom it belongs. The police gets tips a few times every month and they believe that consistency in trying to find clues would help bring Brianna back to her family or at least give her the justice she deserves. Her family started a non-profit organization that funds private investigators to gather information about similar cases. Her father, Bruce Maitland, pledged to continue to help other families to find their missing loved ones. Do you think Brianna had been planning to run away and start all over again? Or was she a victim of people with much more sinister intentions? Until this almost two-decade cold mystery is solved, a mother would regret not having to hold on to her daughter one last time. Let us know what you think in the comments down below. In the next story, Christina Kettlewell was head over heels for Jack Kettlewell. No wonder she agreed to marry him right away. But only nine days after their wedding, she would be found dead near her husband's best friend's burning cottage. Until then, pop it out! <laughs>